Hi everyone, Fresh Thinny Cut Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new job for a cowboy album, Moon Healer. This is the latest and fifth full length LP from Arizona Natives, Job for a Cowboy, who have had one of the most interesting and strangest trajectories of any modern metal band out there career wise, dating all the way back to the MySpace era in the 2000s, which is when they were one of the most popular deathcore bands on the platform dropping a breakout 2005 EP that honestly went a lot harder than some metal snobs at the time were willing to admit. Now, I know the death metal, metalcore fusion style is not one of the most respected in the metal world. Some notoriously corny bands came out of this trend like Attila as well as Chelsea Grin, not to mention when legendary death metal outfits such as Cryptopsy would dabble in the style it often led to some of the most hated records in in the discographies of those groups. For years, Deathcore's absurd adherence to extremity combined with its polarized public perception made it pretty ripe for satire and mockery. But I get it, Deathcore is not a super versatile or artful genre, which is why long term it has not proven to be a very sustainable style, even if you are a halfway decent band operating within it. Which is why years ago, Job for a Cowboy pretty much made the switch over in instead to a blistering and relentless style of technical death metal, slowly incorporating more elements of progressive metal along the way as they put out more records, especially on the 2014 album Sun Eater, a surprisingly competent record from the band that uh, even had some people who had written them off years ago impressed. Even if by technical death metal's very high standards, uh, the music wasn't necessarily holding a candle to uh, the likes of Cynic or Death. Now, in the almost 10 years since the release of Sun Eater. Uh, it seems like Job for a Cowboy has just been cowboy, as it looked like the job was terminated, maybe. But the band is now back with another tech prog death offering, and it kind of sounds like they haven't missed a beat. Really picking up where they left off on their last one, which I can't say is too surprising given that uh, the titles and the respective covers of these albums make it pretty clear they are thematically connected. So yeah, not only is Moon Healer that, but I would say sonically and compositionally, it's an improvement on Sun Eater too. The drumming is flashy, it's dynamic, it's unrelenting, and while it's clearly produced for maximum punch and accuracy, there's still quite a bit of human touch to a lot of the playing that is often missing from more of the uh, super primped and perfected soulless tech death records out there. Meanwhile, Johnny Davies' vocals are as solid as ever. The guttural growls, the harsh screams. Sure, at this point, he's not the most distinct vocalist for this style out there, and uh, maybe without a lot of that tacky deathcore stuff, uh, he's not as instantly recognizable. But he does get the job done and occasionally pulls out uh, some pretty freaky bits during sections of songs like The Agony Seeping Storm. And I'll also say this, over the years his lyricism has matured quite a bit too. I mean, for sure you could go deep into Job for a Cowboy's discography and find tracks like Knee Deep, for example, which are a very genuine and dark portrayal of addiction. But I also think of lyrics on other early cuts like Bearing the Serpent's Lamb, which read as just gratuitously shocking and vile, in a way that by death metal standards is kind of basic. Conversely, the imagery on tracks like The Sun Gave Me Ashes So I Sought Out The Moon read as way more poetic, nightmarish in a kind of cerebral way. So even if the vocals on this thing aren't the most distinct, there's still something to them, especially in the case of the writing they're delivering. Because on a macro level, across this album, a lot of Johnny's lyrics read like this interdimensional odyssey that blurs the line between the real world and the spirit world world and is also hearkening to a lot of lunar themes. Moving on from here to the guitar work, which is much more harmonious than harsh this time around, we have great chord changes, brutal riffs, sticky, dizzying, mystical licks, passionate solos. The guitars really have it all on this thing and are mixed a lot better than they were on Sun Eater 2. The guitars were actually eating up a lot of the room in the mix and smothering everything else good the band had to offer. So that very nice and much needed change on this new LP has left more room for the bass. Now, it's already the case that the bass lines on Job for a Cowboy's Records uh, were progressively getting better, but it's on this album here that they are the best, the best they've ever been so far. 
guitar. The tones are a lot cleaner, the playing is more detailed, the grooves are active, they're dynamic, the bass just has a pristine sound that cuts through all the mayhem, all the chaos in the mix. Uh, reminds me of other death metal outfits like Beyond Creation, for example, but with more slapping and popping in a way that uh, actually adds to the character of the album. And the songwriting on this LP deserves some kudos as well, as you have tracks on this thing that by tech death standards, such as Grinding Wheels of O Phantom, that are pretty hooky and memorable even. And conversely, when the band is delivering songs that are more linear and winding, still even then the various parts of these tracks flow together pretty well, effectively carrying the momentum they build from one section to the next. The one downside of this though is that the band does tend to overload a lot of their songs and uh, verse passages with a lot of guitar ideas, a lot of riff concepts, and this does lead to some of these tracks maybe being a bit too overwhelming to the point where not all the ideas translate or many of them bleed together unflatteringly. And even if this record overall is substantively uh, better and more thoughtful than almost anything Job for a Cowboy has released in the past, it is still a bit generic by tech and prog death standards and lacks a certain something that would put this album on the level of, let's say, a Gorguts, for example. Overall, though, I do think Moon Healer is the best record Job for a Cowboy has put out in years, if not their best album overall. And at this point, especially with this project under their belts, people really should uh, be fully letting go of any preconceptions that uh, these guys are still just a bunch of deathcore miscreants, because they really are making serious creative headway on what is most likely going to be uh, one of the most solid albums in this genre for the year, which is why I'm feeling a decent two strong seven on it. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, job for a cowboy, uh, forever.